Hello, my name is Rocco Beatrice. I'm the Managing Director for State Street Partners, and today we're going to be talking about a limited liability company, as opposed to a corporation, a partnership, a sole proprietorship. When you start a business, you typically call your accountant and say, okay, I'm going to be doing this, that, and the other thing. How should I be doing this, if you get that far? Most people make the assumption that they can just go into business and they start off as a individual doing business, proprietor. So what is the problem with that? Well, that means that every time you do business, if something goes wrong, everything you own is on the line. It's the second worst way to do business is a sole proprietorship. What is the absolute worst way? When you and your buddy decide to go into partnership and start a business and you make a decision that, you know, you're going to do this, your buddy's going to be doing that, and you're going to be in business. Now, here's what the problem is. You're the guy that has the money. Your buddy doesn't have anything. Your buddy gets in trouble. Guess who's going to become responsible for everything he did? He gets into a car, turns the wheel, makes a quadriplegic out of a surgeon. Well, you're going to have to pay for that damage. The worst way to do business is a partnership. Now, a corporation is next. Well, the corporate structure was intentionally designed to limit your liability to the assets that the corporation owns. Over the years, officers, directors, employees of the corporation have been sued. Clever lawyers have figured out how to get through the corporate veil. Pretty much just about everything you can think of, officers, directors, they become primarily responsible for the actions done under the corporate veil, piercing the corporate veil. Next is the limited liability company. Well, it's relatively new. The concept is a cross between a corporation and the partnership. Under the partnership rules, you cannot cross the line between what is owned by the partnership and the individual partner. When you sue the individual partner, if there are other partners, the only thing that you can get is what that partner owns. You cannot become the new owner of the partnership. The limited liability company came into being when the IRS decided that they would accept an LLC income tax return to be taxed as either a sole proprietor, a partnership, or a corporation. You make the election at the time that you get the federal identification number. If there's one member, it goes on your Schedule C as a personal income tax return. If there are two members, it's Form 1065, which is the partnership return. You can also designate to be taxed as a corporation. The problem with the corporation, it gets taxed at the corporate level. Then when it issues a dividend, it's taxed again. So the profits are taxed twice. Thus, today, most people are opting for the limited liability company. But the problem we find is they're using it as an asset protection trust excuse me, as an asset protection device. You go to the account, he says, oh yeah, do a limited liability company. And you would like yourself to be the sole member. So there's one member. Well, the problem with that, it's not an asset protection device if it's a one member because the shares or the membership units, as they're called in a limited liability company, are owned by one individual, just like owning 100 shares of General Motors or whatever company. As a single member, you own the shares. When you go in front of a judge, he says, okay, which is better, throwing up or diarrhea? Either you're gonna give me the shares or I'm going to sell the shares for you. A single member LLC should not be used. Now, multiple members is a better way to go 
because there's someone else there to protect. There have been several cases in which case single members were completely disregarded. The judge simply allowed the piercing of the veil similar to the piercing of the veil of the corporation. Officers, directors, and so forth that were held primarily liable. In this case, the individual member was held primarily liable because he was using it as a back pocket. They didn't observe. There's a whole host of reasons why single member LLCs don't work. So what is the better way then? Well, in order to create a fortress, you got to be able to say, I don't own it. I don't own the asset. I don't own the corporate stock. I don't own the partnership interest. Therefore, when you're sued, if you don't own the membership units, if you don't own the partnership interest, if you don't own the corporate shares, who are they going to sue? So who is the owner of the LLC membership units? In our case, it's an ultra trust. For this subject and more, to learn more, please visit our website, ultratrust.com.